welcome back accounting students. Welcome to the final segment of today's show. Remember, we're busy with analysis and interpretation, and we were looking at the percentage earnings or the percentage return of our partners. So before the ad break, we calculated that Tino's, or not Tino's rather, Kylo's percentage um, return was sitting at 33%. We now can move on to our next partner, which is Tino's percentage earnings or percentage return. So what I've done is, because I needed a bit of space for my calculation, as you can see, I filled in my answer at the top. So let's now calculate for Tino what is his percentage earnings or his percentage return. So we're gonna again start with total earnings. Let's go back to the information. Right, so remember now we're focusing on Tino and his percentage earnings will be his salary plus interest on capital plus his share of the remaining profit. So let's get our calculator out and let's quickly add. Okay, so his salary sitting at 300,000 plus the 60,000 interest on capital plus 23,000, and that gives us an amount of 383,000. So 383,000 is his total earnings. Let's take that through to our answer sheet. So 383,000. Just wanna quickly double check that. 383,000, correct. Right, so once again, we're gonna calculate Tino's average equity so remember, again, we're taking capital plus current account for the current year and the previous year, and we're gonna divide by two. Now, because I did that calculation in detail on the previous slide, I just wanna go to um, the table, right? Because I just need a bit of space. So let's go to our table and let's start off with um, Tino's current account. So looking at his current account, I wanna start with current account first. So at the beginning of the year, he has a negative balance of 3,500. At the end of the year, a positive 5,000, right? So my calculation negative 3,500 plus 5,000, right? Let's look at his balances in terms of capital. So looking at Tino, at the beginning of the year, his capital balance is 500,000. I just want to enter that in. So plus 500,000, right? And then at the end of the year, he contributed an additional 600,000. So his balance at the end of the year is 1,100,000. So let's take that through. Right, let's take that through. So plus 1,100,000. Right, now remember guys, I'm obviously going to add and divide by two, bearing in mind that there is a negative balance in terms of the current account. So let's get the calculator out. Right, so I'm gonna start off with my capital balances first, doesn't really matter where you start. So 500,000 plus 1,100,000, right? Then I've got plus a positive 5,000 and obviously minus the negative 3,500. Okay, I'm just checking that I am using the correct amounts, that's fine. Okay, and remember, I need an average, so I'm gonna divide this by two, and Tino's average equity is 800,750. So let's take that through into um, our answer sheet. So 800, and I've forgotten, 800,750. Back. Okay, right, there we go, and I've done it again, not a problem, let's go back. 
Okay, so now we're ready to calculate his percentage of earnings. So we need the calculator once more. I'm gonna just clear that. So total earnings, 383,000 divided by 800750. Okay, I'm gonna multiply this by 100. And that gives me an amount of, or a percentage rather, 47,83% or 47,8%. Okay, so 47,8%. Okay, right, so obviously we've done the calculation. We calculated the percentage return for both partners. Let's now move on to the next question. Right, so our next question should the partners be satisfied with their returns? Right, so let's quickly rewrite the answers that we had from the previous page. So Kylo 33, Tino 47, I just wanna fill that in. Right, so we've got Kylo, okay, Kylo 33% and Tino, his percentage was 47,8%. Okay, so 47,8%. Right, now will they be satisfied? How do we go about answering this question? Now remember, as an investor, right? I'm a partner, I've invested in a business. I obviously expect a certain return. What am I getting out of my investment? Now, if I've got 500,000 or I've got a million rand, I've got various investment options. I could choose to play it safe, take my money and invest it in a bank. Every month I'm earning interest on that investment. I could take my money, invest it in property. Every month I'm receiving rent from the property if I let out that property and obviously that value of property will increase in time. Hopefully that will happen. So as an investor, you've got various options. Now, if you look at our two partners, Tino and Kylo, they decided to invest their capital or invest their funds into a business. So should they be satisfied with their investment? How, we, how are we gonna go about answering this? We are gonna compare this to alternate investment, right? And in most cases, the alternate investment that your examiner or your teacher is looking for is a fixed deposit, okay? So remember, at the moment, and if I look at the banks at the moment, Okay, they could offer you 8%, right, anywhere between 8 to 10%. I don't think you're gonna get more than 10%. Obviously, I'm looking at the current interest rate, which changes after every two months, so I'm not gonna now tell you exactly the rate is sitting at 10% or 11%, right? But as an investor, if you open up a fixed deposit, banks could offer you anywhere between eight to 10%. In fact, 8% is a bit high, right? Banks won't really give you 8%, maybe lower than that. But like I said, I'm not too sure in terms of the rate at this point in time. The rate keeps on changing. Now, if you look at their percentage return, 33%, 47%, can you see it's obviously much higher than what the banks are offering. So if the bank is offering you 8%, right? The business on the other hand, the return that you're earning from investing in the business is 33%, right? For Kylo, Tino on the other hand, 47,8%. So should they be satisfied with their return? Definitely. Okay, they definitely should be satisfied with their return because it's much higher than what they would get if they invest their money in a fixed deposit, which is your alternate investment. Okay, right guys, hopefully you got that. We don't have much time. Let's see how much of the next question we can complete. Right, so we've got the exact same business, but we've got new set of ratios that's given to us. We've got the debt equity ratio given return on total capital employed as well as interest on loan. So like I said, we don't have much time, but let's see what we can answer. 
Okay, the very first question, we've got the debt equity ratio has improved from 2020 to 2021. Provide two possible reasons for the improvement. Right, and I don't think we're gonna do, be able to do much or write down the answer, so I'm just gonna quickly explain. So the debt equity ratio, if we compare 2020 to 2021, we can clearly see that there is an improvement. Right, now what could cause this improvement? Obviously, if you paid back your loan, a certain portion of the loan, there would be an improvement in the debt equity ratio. If the partners invested more capital into the business, this could also result in an improvement in the debt equity ratio. Okay, right guys, I'm afraid that's all time or that's the amount of time that we had. Unfortunately, we cannot continue, but just very quickly to summarize, please make sure guys, you know your ratios. Very, very important that you know the calculations and you are able to analyze and interpret that information. That is very, very critical, right? So that's all we have time for in today's lesson. Hopefully you guys benefited from today's show. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Until the next time, God bless, stay safe and keep practicing. Thank you.